Welcome back in this segment of our program brought to you by A.G. Heinz Company. Concrete, stucco, plaster, masonry, whatever the building material, A.G. Heinz Company can provide it for you. They've been doing that for 100 years for the biggest and best contractors across the state of Tennessee. Uh, th and then for you, the, the, those of you out there that do do-it-yourself stuff, that have your own projects, not only do they provide the materials, they also provide the tools and they got a century's worth of expertise they can share with you to help you put this project together the right way. So you're not just walking home with a box of stuff and then left to your own device. Call them, they can help you. A.G. Heinz Company. Okay, this is our hot read segment. Two quick questions for the panel. Uh, first of all, let's start with Jim Chaney. He has had some success through two games, stepping on the accelerator a little bit. Now, he doesn't stay up-tempo. It's not like the old Butch Jones, everybody's up-tempo all the time, and it's not regular pace all the time. He steps on the gas, he lets it up. He steps on the gas, he lets it up. I'll start with Will. Outside looking in, it would appear to me, if I were a defender, that I would rather know going into a game, they play at a regular speed, or this is all up-tempo, rather than down-to-down, down, is this going to be up-tempo or not? Is that a proper view of that? Is it, is it easier or tougher on a defender to not know what pace you're getting in the next series? I think it's tougher just because you always have to expect it's going to be faster, uh, and then all of us, you know, that you have to expect that, so you're basically having to consume the same amount of energy, get up, get ready, as if it is going to be fast, and then it's slow. Uh, on, those on, on those times, and so you've kind of wasted your energy. To, you really didn't need it. For me, it would definitely be more troublesome to have that off and on, off and on, uh, just not knowing what you're going to get because let's say they go for a few times where it's the slower pace, and then they throw that one in, you're not ready. I think it's a very good strategy to be using that as kind of a way to keep the defense off balance. So I, I think it's very smart use because it would be difficult. I, I thought too. it was effective with Garantano on a couple of sneaks. They went tempo yeah. there, and they caught the defense, I don't know about napping, but not ready. Yeah, they, especially early. They caught the TV crews <laughs> off, yeah. off guard, too. Let me ask you, too, about another aspect of Cheney's um, use of his offense this year. Let's go ahead and put up the numbers if we could. How they are splitting their touches between Chandler and Gray. Rushes, Chandler's got 32. Gray's got 28. Yardage, pretty even. Receptions, Chandler's got four. Gray's got two. Uh, total touchdowns, one for Chandler, three for Gray almost four. I'm not so sure he didn't get in yesterday. Yeah, and then Garantano, they gave him the touchdown. I'm not so sure he got in. <laughs> but anyway, uh, total touches, though, 36 for Chandler, 30 for Gray, yardage within 10 yards. Is this the way they should be splitting it? Would you be giving one guy more touches than this, or do you like the fi almost 50-50 balance? No, I like it. I like the balance. And I, I think, and, and, and these running backs, I think, like each other. They're fine with this. But I, I do think that uh, you need to keep both of them fresh. I think this is the way to do it. And, I th and by the way, is there a better running back duo in the SEC right now than, than Chandler and Gray? Anybody better in the league? I, I don't know that you may have an individual back at a school that's better, but as a, as a tandem, I don't know that there's a better duo than that group, than, than those two. So I, I like the way they're using you, it. You would maybe think Georgia might have too after watching them a little bit Yesterday, last night. Maybe. But here's one thing you know about Eric Gray. He knows where the end zone is. When he gets a, when he gets down there and he's got a chance to score, it's like he runs through the back of the end zone sometimes. And that's a special trait. Not all backs have that. But he's got that. And I, that, that's one thing you wonder, maybe you could use them a little bit more on the field at the same time. Yeah. But the way they're doing it is working. I think it's working. If it were me, I might have 36 touches for Gray and 30 for Chandler. I, I like Gray out of the backfield. But in mm -hmm. terms of your question of, is there anybody that has two backs that are better than this right now? I would, I would give the edge to Tennessee, especially because these aren't just running backs. They're both good catching the football. And yeah, I don't right. know of another group that has and it, two backs that are good running the ball and catching the And have this good of an offensive line, too. Right. You know. <laughs> okay. Uh, second question here. UT has been dealing with changes in the secondary. Uh, McCullough was out last week. So was Schamberger. This week, Slaughter made way for Jackson to come in. Jackson had the interception. He was playing the star. Uh, George came in and started for uh, Bryce Thompson, who was banged up. They expect him to be good moving forward. The numbers have been decent. Uh, opposing quarterbacks completing 60% of their passes for 508 yards, 7.9 yards per attempt, one touchdown, two interceptions against Tennessee. They haven't been facing Heisman caliber quarterbacks here. No. 
you get a Georgia guy who suddenly looked pretty good yesterday. Mm -hmm. He might be their Daryl Dickey uh, to go back a lot of years for Tennessee <laughs> fans. Uh, then you get Alabama who's got one of the best pass offenses in the country. Is this secondary ready for the tests that they're going to get in two of the next three weeks? I'd say it'd be hard to press to say that they are. I mean, you even look out on the field on some run plays where they weren't coming up at the right angle, and you saw two guys bickering back and forth about you were supposed to do that. There's miscommunication going on. And so not only are you going to have better athletes that aren't going to drop this long ball on you, uh, most likely, but you're going to see these teams start doing more motion, more guys moving around making the secondary have to change and make calls to see if they can all communicate well. So right now, this team, they're having some communication issues back there, and it's that mix of different guys just not working together. So right now, I say they're not ready. I think they need to find, find four or five guys and get them out there more often. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Will's assessment on that. One, the issue is you've had a number of injuries mm -hmm. and mispractices, and that combination has not allowed you to communicate as well. I think that has led to some of the mistakes uh, and Missouri had a couple of guys that just, as Will pointed out, just dropped passes. Uh, so I don't think that the secondary at this point is ready for that. Probably more so ready for Georgia than Alabama because Alabama throws the ball better in Georgia. But I still don't think the secondary is quite ready at this point. If they get all healthy, then that would change my mind. But at this point, they're not. And did, don't you think after watching the South Carolina tape, didn't you think Missouri might try the slant a little bit more? I think they only tried it a couple of times, and, and they, one was a completion. I thought they left South Carolina left some money on the table by not going with that. But Tennessee hadn't really replaced Nigel Warrior, have they? I mean, when you think about the guy at the back end that Jeremy Pruitt likes to talk about having an eraser on defense that can make up for someone else that makes a mistake, that's the position I think you really have to look at. Who's that guy back there that can, if Theo Jackson yesterday dropped back, he wasn't even supposed to be there on that interception. So who's the guy that can make plays for you? And right now I don't think they have that. Yeah, the key to that secondary is you're going to have to find four or five guys that can be out there week after week. And until you do, you may continue to have the miscommunication issues. Yep. Okay, uh, when we come back, it's our favorite segment, our favorite new segment, <laughs> why they were stupid. We'll tell you why they were stupid next. Come on back.